Hi, I'm Marty McCurdy with Spirit Electronics, and uh, for our second Tech Talk, I'm here with Ben from Raycon. And today's application discussion, we're going to talk about GPS positioning and how oscillators are used in those applications. So I know that, uh, Ben, you could probably give us a long history on uh, how Raycon started years ago uh, supporting the GPS applications that are out there, and obviously, uh, none of us want to live without GPS now. We couldn't live without our Google Maps, etc. Right. So but let's talk a little bit about the technology behind uh, how oscillators are used and what their two, two or three critical pieces are in, in using the oscillators in a positioning application. Sure. Uh, so in, in a GPS application, uh, the key, key criteria is uh, typically going to be the frequency stability and the phase noise uh, of the oscillator. Um, and those are going to be mostly um, based on the crystal and the ASIC that's used with that crystal, okay. um, that TCXO or OCXO. Great. Well, crystals, when we talk about those, I know there's a lot of technology, and I feel personally that uh, supporting Raycon as a distributor, that you're leading the charge on crystal technology there. So could you tell us a little bit about what's going on maybe in the, in the back room on uh, crystal technology without giving away your secrets? Sure. Um, Raycon's always put a, um, uh, a large amount of our resources into developing the, the next greatest crystals. Um, in, in our strip crystals, one of the newest technologies we uh, have released in the last year or so is uh, an SC cut strip crystal. So most uh, strip crystals in the past have been AT cut, and that has to do with the angle of the cut of the, the okay. crystal. Um, but we've developed the first commercially available SC strip crystal. Um, and what the SC cut gets you is much better um, aging. Okay. It also gets you uh, the capability of doing much better uh, temperature stability, uh, especially when it's in, in, in part of an OCXO. Uh, the other aspect that comes from the SC cut is a tighter Q or quality factor, which gets you better phase noise and better, in, in particular, better close in phase noise, which is key for, uh, for certain areas of GPS. Well, certainly, uh, talking about the crystal and how that applies to the electronics behind it and the ASIC, let's talk a little bit about that phase noise and phase noise under vibration because mm -hmm. these applications obviously are critical to that. Not even just GPS, but other uh, applications that they might be in tune with. So, you know, let's talk a little bit about the accuracy and, and uh, things like that in regards to the, the, the phase noise. Sure. So, uh, kind of. I guess first question, you know, why is phase noise important uh, in a GPS okay. application? Um, the, uh, there's a couple things. Um, the first is just the, uh, is the anti-jamming uh, okay. factor. Uh, if you're competing with jamming signals, it, your ability to sense or you know, detect the GPS signal out of that, all that noise mm -hmm. is going to be dependent on your phase noise. Um, so that phase noise actually applies to sensitivity in general, in, if you're talking about a GPS denied environment um, or, a, or a GPS jammed environment, it's the signal to noise ratio, both of which okay. are de dependent on that phase noise. I see. Is it by chance that uh, I show up in the street uh, in the wrong location that I'm picking up the wrong noise uh, signal to noise ratio or uh, how does it actually affect the application? Um, it's mostly just a question of whether you can receive a signal or not. So okay. it's, you're just okay. either going to be able to get a good signal and know where you are, or or not, not be able to get enough enough, enough um, signals from different satellites to be able to tri triangulate your position very well. Um, and I think the other thing that's important to mention is that um, phase noise in a, in a static environment is one thing, in, in a benign environment. Um, but the phase noise of an oscillator is dependent on the acceleration sensitivity of the crystal. So uh, if you take an oscillator and then put it in a, uh, a high vibration environment uh, on a truck, on a tank, uh, on, a tank <laughs> on a missile, um, then the, the, you know, the phase noise is directly, uh, the, any sort of vibrations at a given frequency turn into phase noise sure. uh, at that at that same offset frequency from from the uh, from the carrier, so Raycon's did a lot of work in terms of um, developing low G sensitivity crystals. So these are a specific crystal um, uh, construction, specific uh, crystal cuts, um, or in some cases actually dual dual crystal techniques 
to reduce the G sensitivity of the oscillator uh, and thus improve the phase noise in these high vibration environments. Very good, nice. And I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but there's a, an entire family of parts within Raycon that this applies to, and those are in the Mercury and Mercury Plus uh, family of parts. Is that correct? Well, we, we have both. Um, for the dual crystal devices right now, that's mostly in the TCXOs. Um, that's our temperature compensated crystal oscillators. Mm -hmm. um, in the OCXOs, uh, well, that's on the horizon. Right now we're working more with um, specific cuts and constructions for single crystal devices okay. that have inherently lower G sensitivity than uh, a classic crystal. Oh, I see. Okay. Well, I'm certainly happy you're leading the charge um, because I can't live without my GPS, but I appreciate your time today and uh, thank you very much. Thank you, And uh, we'll continue our tech talks uh, with Raycon uh, at a later date. Thanks so much.